Hi, this is Carol Harnett with the One Take Work, Love, Play daily video blog. And I apologize, I just got back from almost three hours of bushwhacking through the snows, the snow in the hills, so I'm a little messy looking, but I knew this was the best time to get this done. So I've been actually asked to do a number of posts I hadn't thought about doing in follow-up to my column, my HR executive column, and this one is called Selling the Problem of Absence. Um, asking for more history and more clarity around some things around disability. So I have two additional topics people would like me to cover. I'm going to cover one of them now. And one of them I was asked to cover was by Dan Tessator, who's a gentleman I've worked with a couple times in a couple of different companies. And he asked me to comment on the history of disability claim management, at least as I've seen it over what I now realize is about 14 years, um, which is incredible to me, just so you know, <laughs> kind of overwhelming. And he thought perhaps there'd been a lot of advancement and a lot of evolution, and there are some elements of that that are really true, and some of that that is maybe not as true. I actually gave it a lot of thought um, over the past couple of days. And so let me tell you what I know. Um, I think, first of all, the reason I got recruited into the disability insurance industry was because there was a lot of innovation going on 14 years ago. And part I know of the work that I got involved with in the claim organizations twice, uh, actually, was to bring a lot of the elements that we use in the clinical world to the claim management world. So we introduced, um, twice I've introduced SOAP noting, uh, which is a way that clinicians organize their thoughts and it just stands for S stands for subjective. So what is the person perceiving, feeling, what is the physician perceiving, feeling, what is the employer per perceiving and feeling. Objective, what do you solidly know, what's measurable, demonstrable, um, metric driven. Assessment, what do you think of the two things and then what's your plan. And then also introduce things like claim discussions and we reorganized how clinical people and vocational rehab people worked on teams and we made their jobs equivalent and we integrated the concept um, of a holistic point of view around claim management for, um, in, in, at least in disability claims, around claim management for how we looked at an individual. So we looked at their abilities, we looked at what they could do instead of focusing on the limitations. So there was a conscious shift about 14 years ago that carried through over the probably the four following years, so the last 10 to 14 years, was a, a conscious shift from focusing on what's called functional limitations to focusing on functional capabilities. So instead of saying that a person couldn't lift more than 20 pounds, you would say a person could lift up to 20 pounds. It sounds like semantics, but it's a really different way to approach an individual as well as a healthcare provider and an employer about what people really can do. So a huge shift of the focus on functional um, incorporation of clinical elements into the total claim management process, incorporation of clinical people and vocational rehab people on teams, making their jobs equivalent, and also starting to incorporate clinical milestones that we knew worked from a rehabilitation perspective into what lined up data-wise um, in the disability claim books, when you, particularly when you talk to actuaries. So for example, for whatever reason, and nobody knows exactly the reason why this is, seems to be such a magic number, but uh, most human beings, when they become ill or injured, are significantly better at the six-week mark, 42 days. Interestingly enough, when I first um, started working in and around disability insurance, if you looked at claims from the day a person went out of work to the day that they came off claim, the median was exactly 42 days, and the mean was very tight to that, so both the mean and the median um, were about 42 days, exactly what you'd find in the clinical world. And what was important about that is it was there's also statistics related to the likelihood that somebody will return to work relative to time out of work almost more than their actual condition. So for example, um, most people, 85% of people return to work uh, in the first 13 weeks. If you get to six months, it drops to 50%. If you get to a year, it drops to 25%. And if you get to two years, it drops to somewhere between two and 5%. Very time-driven, no correlation really, uh, particularly as time goes out with the diagnosis. So there is the influence of the psychosocial factors, right, or attitude. So that was uh, another thing that we saw. Um, what happened after that, if there's probably advancement or sophistication that's happened in disability claim management, um, since that point, um, I'm going to break this into another post as well, is, is the use of clinical staff, particularly vocational rehab staff. That's going to be a separate post that actually somebody asked me to do. Um, but really it came in taking those milestone points, six weeks, 13 weeks, six months, one year, two years, 
and making them uh, programmable points in a claim system so that claim examiners paid attention to a claim at those specific hallmark points. That and the significantly improved use of data uh, are probably the two as big advancements in disability claim management. I actually think the bulk of the innovation occurred somewhere in the last 10 to 14 years and we haven't seen as much innovation as we've seen use of data. So that's my perspective. Uh, this is Carol Harnett with a one take work love play daily video blog. Hoping you didn't get in so much work today but you've had some great love and have absolutely had some awesome time to play. Take care.